Hi, welcome back to the second skills video where today we're going to be looking at giving route directions. So we're not focused at this point about giving instructions, just route directions. So points we're going to consider today when developing this skill, I've prepared some bullet points here and we're going to go through and talk about each of those in turn. So just to give you a little overview of what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the ADI methods, the, the method that the examiners use when they conduct tests. Um, we're going to talk about when to use the identifier, the identifier, give some examples of that. We're going to talk about giving clear, concise directions in good time, keeping things simple. We're going to talk about having local knowledge of your area, being aware and sort of things like when they say next available road, what that means and sort of, yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, looking at the pupil, protecting your voice, thinking about bumps in the road, talk about that. Um, when the examiner says, sorry, what the examiner says at the start of a driving test to get that sort of script so you can sort of learn that. Uh, look at independent drive as well in this section. Using the sat nav on lessons, um, dealing with pupils with dyslexia or dyspraxia who get left and right muddled up. And what about pupils that go the wrong way? So that's sort of the scope of today's lesson. So um, we're going to talk through those in turn, but to put everything in context, we just kind of need to think about the the um, the competencies. Where does this fall into the competencies? So I'm just going to share, if I may. Okay, so if we just look at the marking sheets, we've got the marking sheet up there now. So if we look at the risk section, I zoom in on that. So second one down in risk were directions and instructions given to the pupil clear and given in good time. So this is the bit we're going to be focusing on today. Were directions given clear and in good time? As I said, instructions, I'm going to cover that in a separate video. We just want to get these directions sorted out. Okay. And what else do I want to share with you? So if we go... Bear with me. Get rid of that. Yeah, if we go to the ADI 1 document, this is the uh, the examiner's guidance uh, for carrying out instructor tests and checks. You can zip down to um, the part three section, but the page I want to go to, I believe is 52. So I'll just put that in there and here we are. So let's just zoom in on this a little bit so we can see that. So yeah, word directions and instructions given to the pupil clear in good time. So let's just talk about some of the key points on this. So um, directions should be taken to mean instruction, i.e. Turn, in, turn left at the next junction. Or if it was an instruction, try changing gear a little earlier. So as I say, we are just gonna focus on the direction side of this just for this video today. Um, we're just going to, you know, I let you read through this, you know, get a copy of this. You can just get it on the internet, download it. It's very easy to get. Just Google um, ADI 1 and that will come up. So indicators um, that all elements of this competent are in place could include clear, concise directions, ensuring the pupil understands what the plan um, what they plan to do and agrees with the plan, directions given at a suitable time, and that the pupil can respond. So we don't want to be given directions too late, um, so they haven't got time to do their MSPSL routine, for example, um, and we don't want to give them too early so they're confused as to where they're going. So timing is, is critical. Um, indications for lacking co of competence in, in this area would be giving directions too late, um, giving unnecessary directions. So like too many words, confusing things. We want to just keep things simple. Uh, failing to recognize when the PDI is, caused, is, is causing overload or confusion. So are we talking too much? Are we putting too much information into our pupils' heads so they just don't know where they're going and can't follow that? So that sort of puts, the, um, puts it into context of the marking sheet. So let's go back to my little agenda so yeah so let's start talking about the the method the adi method this is the um alert direct identify method this is what the examiners will use so if you use it as an instructor then your pupils will kind of understand what the examiner is saying and 
it's a tried and tested method. Examiners have been doing this for many, many years and they've learned what makes it effective. So if we could just borrow that skill, that is gonna be um, nice and easy. So let's sort of have a look at some examples of that to put it into, into context. So let's just take a nice uh, simple roundabout. Let's say that we wanna go ahead at this roundabout. So the alert will be, okay, Howard, at the roundabout. I've been alerted. Direct, ahead. Do we need an identifier? If we were gonna use an identifier, that would be the second exit. So to put that all in a string, so okay, Howard, at the roundabout, I'd like you to go ahead it's the second exit. Now, you could argue that you don't really need that exit because there is only one ahead. So on this roundabout, there's one left. So you could just say at the roundabout, turn left. At the roundabout, go ahead. At the roundabout, turn right. Because it's very simple. We don't really need to use those extra words for the identifier because there, there is only one left, one ahead and one right. If there are two lefts, then absolutely we must say the second left or the first left. Okay, so that's a nice simple one with using ADI. Let's have a look at this one. So at this roundabout, we're going ahead, but it's slightly to the right. So I wouldn't say right for this one. I would say at the roundabout, ahead. And, and leave it as that. So as we come up the road on this one, Road markings and signs will help the pupil identify that they can use either lane to go ahead. So if they were to pick the right lane, that would be in correct positioning, unless of course they're overtaking. So let's have another look at another one. Okay, directions given clear and in good time. So here we're on a dual carriageway approaching a roundabout, and we can see in the distance there, there is a sign. Now I would actually, let's go back a little bit, but bear in mind we're probably doing 60 or 70 miles an hour on this road. I'd want to be delivering that instruction by here. Okay, so think by the time you've said that. Okay, Howard, at the roundabout, I'd like you to go ahead. Information's in, they now can respond to these signs and the directions being delivered in good time so that now they can look at this sign and think what they're doing. So, okay, so let's go back to the direction. So on this one, it should be at the roundabout, ahead, second exit. So there I just initially, um, I made a mistake. I said at the roundabout, go ahead, but we do need that identifier because look, the aheads, is second exit and it looks like a left so this is potentially confusing confusing so this is why this needs to be delivered in good time so they could before this sign so they can study that sign work out where they're going you could add an identifier like towards chroma um, also on that to make that really clear to help the pupil and then as they come up you know they're going to see the road markings and lanes and all that okay good so let's have a look at another one so this is the same roundabout coming from the opposite direction. Now I put this in, so any PDIs that I'm helping in Norwich, you know, the, the, this is a tricky old roundabout sometimes with giving directions. So at this roundabout, again, I'd be giving that in good time. I'd be delivering that instruction well before this sign, because if I started that now, we'd be past that sign before I finished my sentence. So at this roundabout, if we were to go ahead, so let's just come in closer to it so we can see this sign a little bit clearer. So ahead, slight right, isn't it? So I would be saying well before this sign. Okay, Howard, at the roundabout, I'd like to go ahead. It's the second exit. Now we need to think about local knowledge here because as we go down this road, a little bit further, notice there's no signs about road markings, nothing about what lanes we should be using. So there's no help, no signs about road markers. And then when we get to here, look, we see these road markings saying for a head we can use either lane. Okay. And then as we get a little bit closer, the lanes were split. So that, so look, you can see that now. So we've got, we've got 
three lanes, uh, two for going ahead, uh, the left for left only. Okay, so going back, let's rewind time. So going back to that, I think we need an identifier for this. We need something to help our people to make this clear. And this is what examiners would say. Let's turn around. So as I said, this would be delivered well before this sign. So it'd be, okay, Howard, at the roundabout, I'd like you to go ahead. It's the second exit. And you can use either the center or the right-hand lane. Or you can either use this lane or the right lane to give them some choice because signage here is not very clear. And the first time I drove down this road when they opened it and I saw that sign, I I saw the position of the turn I wanted to make towards, um, towards Yarmouth and I moved into the right-hand lane. And most drivers would do that based on that information, wouldn't they? Because they don't know what the lanes are going to do. Look, how would we know from here? So that extra information is really valuable to your learner. So, yeah, you can use, stay in this lane, or you can use it, either use the centre lane or the right-hand lane. We just help them um, know where they're going. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, so I'm um, going to take the next road on the right. So that needs to be delivered in good time. So about here, I'd be saying, okay, Howards, I'd like you to take the next road on the right. So by the time those words have left my mouth, I'm probably going to be here, aren't I? And so they can see that and now they can start their mirror signal position, speed, look, routine. So we need to give them plenty of time to be able to do that. Okay, so that's that one. Have another look at another example. So in this one, I want my pupil to take the second road on the left. So we've got the first one, we've got the second one just up here. So in this one, I'll be saying in good time, okay, Howard, I'd like you to take the second road on the left. This is the first one. So we would just identify that as the first one. So by the, so they, they are clear on what they're doing. So then they can go down that one. Okay, let's just, touch on independent driving where uh, the pupil might be asked to follow signs um, rather than using the, the ADI method. So they might have been asked to follow signs to swap them. So here we've got swap them on this sign here. So we're coming round. So in terms of what lane we should be in, we normally drive on the left, don't we? So we'd be on the left unless we was overtaking. And then we've got a signage that's covered by this bush and Swatham is hidden. So really, if um, if it is independent drive, are you following SatNav? Uh, the SatNav would be giving some instruction like it's bare right. Um, as an examiner, I might, or an instructor might just say, look, it's gonna be to the right and you can use either lane here because if we saw that sign, I think most drivers would think, okay, I'd, well, this is a bit odd. I'd better get into this right-hand lane and start moving over. So this is where local knowledge comes in because if we go a little bit further down the road here, we've got road markings for A47 ahead and for that A47 right. Okay, so still, if you don't know, they are a little bit confusing. Then the next sign will clear that up. And so we have Swatham. You can use either lane, but look where that sign comes. I mean... It's on top of, you know, we, if we were here now and seeing that sign, we've got to move over. So really, we need to let our people know what's happening. And so, like I say, local knowledge is really essential here. So at this point, I'd be saying you can use either lane for Swatham. Okay, so that would help. So that's kind of like using the identifiers, giving them a little bit more information to make it clear uh, so they understand. Let's look at this one. So... um we're going to be taking the next road on the right. This is about when you'd want to be delivering that direction. And now it's really hard to see the next road on the right. So I'd be saying, OK, Howard, I'd like you to take the next road on the right. It's just after that second large tree. One tree one, tree two, because it's hidden. We still can't really see it, can we? So if we move up here, people's thinking, right. And you might even say, this is, yes, yeah, so there, it's just after the, the next tree tree so they're hidden away um, so the people has an identifier to know where it is identifiers can be used if there are parked cars blocking the view so let's say we had a row of parked cars here as well and we couldn't see it we could just say 
like to take the next road on the right, it's just after the row of parked cars. Okay, so that's that one. Um, now there's a junction, a right junction just after this turn, after this bend. So we need to give the direction clear and in good time. So it'd be okay, Howard. I'd like to take the next road on the right. It's just after the bend. So when they come round, oh, sorry, like my mistake. Look, there's two. So there, the, the, how easy is it to give a confusing instruction? So like, there, I'd be up there. Look, I've just turned into like some yard. So, okay, so like I say, knowing your area, see that we all make mistakes, knowing your area is so important. So let me try that one again. Okay, okay, Howard, I'd like you to take the second road on the right. Your turn is just after the bend. This is the first. So now we're getting it right. And there's our second one just up there. Good. So it just shows how easy it is to make a mistake and so really knowing your area is is going to help you and sort of, yeah, from making those sort of mistakes. Okay, this is a challenging one. So at the start of a driving test, the examiner is going to say to you, to your pupil, um, in terms of directions, I would like you to follow the road ahead at all times unless road markings or signs direct you otherwise. Okay, if I need you to turn left or right, I'll let you know in plenty of time. Cool. So, okay, so let's say the time is um, eight o'clock. Um, so we're driving down here at eight o'clock in the morning. And this sign here, would the examiner be directing us at this point? Bearing on what he's just said at the start, follow the road ahead unless signs or road markings tell you otherwise. So signs here are telling us that if we go ahead, it's for buses, taxis and cyclists only. And there is an enforcement camera there. Okay, so the examiner will expect you at this roundabout to turn right. So we turn right. Where's our little learner going? Gonna go ahead. So I think here we can assume that the time of day is outside of those hours. So during those times, we will be heading down there and we will not be directed. Now, this is a really good area in terms of training to help your pupils read signs and understand road markings. Because when they're on their own, how likely are they going to make this mistake? And it's going to cost them some money too, because there are enforcement cameras and they will be notified of their error. So... um. So yes, that's, that's so important. So um, really good areas like this in your local area where you can sort of test your pupils and sort of get, yeah, you don't trick them, but give them the information they need. So yeah, are you happy to take responsibility for following roads, um, signs and road markings and give them a little heads up and say like, you know, there's a challenge ahead. I want you to do that. Think about it. You could even, let's say it was 10 o'clock. You could even say, imagine it's eight o'clock in the morning and I want you to follow signs and road markers. And there's something that there's going to be challenge you and see how you get on with that. That would really be preparing them for the real world of driving. So just to take it up here, if we carry on, let's have a little look. Let's see what time of day it is. So now look, as we get here, actually, let's just, I went a little bit too far forwards. Let's just come back a little bit, turn around. So I think if we have come here at eight o'clock in the morning, where are we gonna turn around? We can't do a three point turn on a zebra crossing, can we? So we'd have to do it kind of here. We would have to turn the car in this little bit between these parked cars, very awkward. Because if we continue, the road on the left, our escape route, oh, hang on a minute, no entry. And if we continue here, this sign here is when the hours, when it is when it is a bus gate, when the bus lane is in, in effect, that would be lit up blue. And this is the start of your bus gate. So at this point for that, what, 20 meter section of road is where we'd be in trouble. Okay, so that's that one. Also think about, um, when the examiner says take the next available road on the right. So 
what do they mean by that have a look at this picture what are they saying take the next okay howard i'd like you to take the next available road on the right can we take the next available road on the right so if our if we or our pupil attempts to turn in here there's going to be a problem isn't there so um so yeah so just look out and be aware of when examiners are saying that Okay, they're not trying to trick you, they're testing you to make sure that you're aware of signs and road markings. Okay, because when you're on your own, when our pupils are on their own, driving independently, you know, they're going to fall foul of this. The sat nav might say, take the next road on the right, but it's closed or, or whatever. So, um, so we need to make our pupils independent and think independently and be responsible for, for looking at signs and... Um, of making good decisions got another example here so this is a tricky one so again like this is really knowing local area so let's say at this roundabout we want to go ahead which is the third exit okay so the instruction would be okay Howard at the roundabout I'd like you to go ahead it's the third exit with that information what would I be thinking of let's say I've never been down here before I would be thinking, right, I'm going to go ahead, I'll use the left lane, because that's what we do, isn't it, when we go ahead, unless we're overtaking. So I'd be coming up here, I think, well, I'll keep left, into my left-hand lane, and now look at where I've got to go. There's the first exit, second exit, third exit, that now feels like a right. So I'd be going round in the left-hand lane, round here, round there, and at this point it's going to get very awkward, because we might get a car potentially from the right trying to come in to go ahead there and I'm going to be coming round and also as I'm coming round in this left hand lane here all these cars are kind of tricked they're pretty sure I'm going into that left but I'm going to come round and quite often again local knowledge tells us that when we take that line that these cars pull out in front of us because they're pretty sure we're going to take the second exit so if we rewind that now we know that let's go back go back here what would we say differently well now oh, I'd be saying okay Howard at the roundabout I'd like you to go ahead third exit but treat this roundabout as a right so now I think okay so I'd come up in the right hand lane and I'd pop a signal on so I'd wear, be where this blue van is and for the reason we said, because that's where I'm going. Because by the time I get here and I'm facing that way, that's where my car's facing. This feels like right. So um, so that's just a little local nuance of, of, of knowing this particular roundabout. Okay, so that's that one. So let's go back to my little agenda. Here we are. Okay, so what have we covered in there? So let's see how much of this we've covered. So we've talked about the ADI method and give some examples of alert, direct and identify. We've talked about when to use the identifier, so when it's not obvious, that would help. We've talked about giving clear, concise directions and, and in good time and keeping things simple. We've talked about having good local knowledge, know your area, avoid things like closes, cul-de-sacs, um, that will help you. Maybe if you're new to the area or new to the job, use a sat-nav. Have the sat-nav screen on your car if you've got a built-in sat-nav. So you can identify where the closes are, where the cul-de-sacs are. If you get lost, your pupil takes a wrong turn how to get round the houses back to where you want to be. So you're not sort of got that sinking feeling of not knowing where you are. Okay, so um, be aware of next available road. We've talked about that. Um, Projecting your voice, look at the pupil. So when you're giving the, the direction, what I would do is turn my head, look at them and say, OK, Howard, at the roundabout, turn left. So my voice is projected towards them so they can hear it. And also, because I'm looking at them, now I can keep looking at them, see if they check those mirrors, look, look at their eyes, hands, feet, as well as taking my looks to be aware of my surroundings as well. OK, good. Um, 
I put in there avoid bumps in roads. So any any good examiner or any experienced instructor would tell you that yeah we know we know our areas very well. We know where all the bumps in the roads are, and we know that if we deliver that um, uh, direction as we're going over a bump, our voice will go really high. So um, so little tips like that. You know, think about that. Think, you know, just because it, it's embarrassing when your voice goes whoop, when you go over the bumps. So yeah, so that that's something an examiner once told me when I was doing a an audit inspection. He's he he sort of had a chuckle to himself, and my voice went really high. And he says, "Yeah, you know, we we look out for these bumps in the road and the potholes and things like that." So yeah, so um, what does the examiner say at the start of the driving test? Well, I've already covered that, so um won't go back through that again but if ever you want to look up where that is where do you get that information look at dt1 okay um we've talked about independent drive we were in that i'll be following road markings and signs and how you can encourage your people to be responsible for doing that set them challenges um why not use a sat nav on lesson get the sat nav out um this will help your pupils prepare for for something that will happen on the on the driving test and just get them used to responding to directions given by a sat nav in case you're wondering what sat nav the examiners use i'm just going to pop that down i've put that up there so yeah the tom tom start 52 is the model of um sat nav that examiners are using currently um so it might be an idea to get that one because then you know for familiar familiarity um and how it looks and where things are presented so um so that might be a, a good tip to do um okay so we've talked about yes yeah, using sat nav dealing with pupils with dyslexia or dyspraxia so pupils might get muddled up with left and right and things you can do to help them so really good ideas if they do get muddled up with left and right, you can colour code the sides of the steering wheel, maybe get a bit of blue tape for left, a bit of red tape for right. And so you could say, okay, to your people, okay, Howard, I'd like to take the, the next left, that's blue on the steering wheel. That would help them, things like that. And thinking about the driving test, you know, they, sorry, take a step backwards, take a step backwards from that. So you can colour code the steering wheel or other things. You could be more visual. Say, so, okay, Howard, I'd like you to take the next road on the right with hands. You could do something. As long as it's not confused with anything like that you're doing the emergency stop or anything. So make everything clear how you're doing it. So, or you could do it with the steering wheel. We're going to go left. We're going to go right. If it works, then it's effective. And you can talk to your pupils about what works, what doesn't work. Because at the end of the day, they're the best people to tell you. You know, don't don't try and know what they know. You ask them. Just find out is this working. Try different things, and that would be really good. And then, yeah, the thing I was going to say is go into the driving test. Your pupils might be worried about this. Well, think well, will the examiner do that for me? Um, well, color coding's fine. That's do that. That if that helps them. Um, if your pupil's worried, they can say to the examiner that they suffer with dyslexia and they do get left and right muddled up. Can you help me with that, please? And they will. Yes, they will. I have found the section. Um, oh, this this site is just dealing with the dyspraxis. So look, mark the steering wheel uh, with mnemonic devices, coloured stickers, letters, etc. You could even write left and right on their hands. Um, that site there is uh, AA Highway... Um, driving with dyspraxia and the thing i wanted to show you in the dt1 this is the dt1 instructions to candidates this is the examiner's guidance candidates should be given any grounds to so candidates should not be given any grounds to complain um of being frustrated or uncertain if you're aware of a candidate has dyslexia or dyspraxia you should tactfully establish if it affects their driving and make any adjustments if necessary. This may include confirming directions by pointing or using hand signals. So there it is. That is the examiner's guidance. So they will facilitate and help you. So if your pupils let them know, then the, ex the examiner will say, well, what would help? Do you want me to sort of point where we're going? And they can, and they will accommodate. So that's, yeah, important to know that. Okay, okay. 
dealing with pupils with dyslexia or dyspraxia covered going the wrong way how do you deal with pupils that go the wrong way what do you do do you grab the wheel and intervene and make them go the way you want do you tell them off reprimand them for for not listening properly why are they doing it i mean by the way don't do either of those things they're examples of bad practice okay do not do that so think about if your pupils consistently going the wrong way think about have they got dyslexia or dyspraxia you could approach them ask them talk to them about it tactfully um maybe you're just overloading them maybe you're just talking about too much and and everything's getting lost and your pupils overwhelmed distracted um you know think about the the law why is it so such an offense a six point offense and um a, a 200 pound fine for using a mobile phone it's because we're being distracted it's highly dangerous there's so much risk associated with it so equally if we're distracting our pupil with, with too much information we're yeah well, that's bad isn't it we we don't want to be doing that so um think about that if your pupil keeps going the wrong way now i want to just show you now a little little video clip of cassandra with her pupil daisy on how to deal with a pupil that goes the wrong way. So I hope you enjoy that, it's a good example. Think about the things that she did. You might see some things that you might not have done. So yeah, just, just think about that. And as always with these little videos, there's gonna be a worksheet. So if you've been watching it, you'll be able to answer all the questions in the workshop, in the worksheet, there'll be 10 questions. And yeah, and, and just watch, and watch Cassandra now, and I hope you enjoy it. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.